you were able to create this production company, but that wasn't what your first occupation, you know, career was. Talk to me a little bit about the lead up to that and what you were doing and the calling you felt. Sure, sure. Um, I actually used to be in IT for over a decade um, in process engineering, telling Fortune 500 companies how to do business better, really geeky stuff that I don't like to talk about anymore because I love my job now. It's so exciting. Um, but I was called into uh, the film ministry just because I was in the actor's team at a giga church. And I just, I remember coming home and telling my wife, I either want to make a video or be in the video. Uh, I got to go chase this creative thing. And she said, oh, okay, but how are we going to pay for this big house? <laughs> creative dude. So, um, but, you know, God made a way and it was just, I landed Home Depot is like my first major client, uh, Coca-Cola, Ford, um, CDC, and the career really just kind of took off for me. And talk to me about some of those conversations that you had with God uh, when you were trying to decide, do I do this? Do I not do this? Am I supposed to? Because I think that's, you know, transcends for everyone, regardless of what the, <clears throat> the shift or change is. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, a career change is, is scary, especially when you're you're comfortable um, from a financial perspective uh, in where you're at and to step out into deep waters and not know exactly what you're doing. Like, I remember the first couple of things that I was making, um, they were horrible. The lighting was bad. The acting was bad. Um, the writing was bad, but everybody loved it. Uh, we were making kind of like a Nickelodeon thing for uh, the elementary ministry in our church. And people just kept saying, make more stuff, make more stuff. Um, I think, you know, when you step out in, on the water like that, there's always this, this big feeling of imposter syndrome. Like, why me? Uh, I'm not qualified. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not equipped. Uh, I remember seeking out a uh, mentor and following him around like a puppy dog for a year until I got better technically and uh, from a business perspective. So I would just encourage anyone thinking of making the career switch. It's, you know, it's not too late. Um, I was in my mid thirties when I did this thing, moving into the film world and uh, it was scary, but you know, you got to start somewhere and happiness just came right along with it. Of all times now, the world is so ripe for you to be able to kind of develop or identify what your passion is and then go for that and kind of create what that looks like. Um, and, you know, you were, you were fortunate enough to get a $25 million fund to come alongside when you created this production company. Talk to me about that. Sure, sure. So um, I was working for a giga church um, and, and had my own company alongside of it where we were doing, you know, commercial work. Uh, and I was making short films, feature films, talking head stuff, um, training videos for the church. And uh, I remember thinking, I just want to make narrative stuff. And uh, it was the top of last year when God got a hold of me in service. And he was like, I, I know I've been stirring in you to write and direct films only. It's so much more than that. You're going to be starting a faith-based film production company um, and it's going to make a collection of TV and film projects and I'm going to fund it. And I, I remember shaking in my boots, just wondering, hey, how am I going to fund this type of thing? And he literally said, I'm going to fund it. And then a stranger came up to me, um, like that always happens kind of in church because I'm the guy who puts the cool stuff on the screens. So I just, I just assume that I'll be talking to people until my wife you know, pulls me along and says, it's time to go. I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> yes. and the stranger said, Hey, I, I don't know you. God's been talking to me for two weeks uh, to, to tell you that you're going to be standing alongside of the Tyler Perry's of Atlanta. And they're going to wonder why you're there. And God's not going to wonder. Um, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. And you cannot fail. And whatever God told you to do, and this was the scary part, uh, whatever God told you to do, you need to go do. And this was 10 minutes after God had talked wow. to me. I remember like shaking, crying, grown man crying. It was just ugly. It wasn't pretty. Face all swollen. It was nasty. Um, but you didn't have but to wait long for your confirmation. So that was good. No, I certainly didn't. That's why I was crying because God had never <laughs> confirmed anything that quickly for me. Um, and shortly after, we met up with some uh, investment investors and uh, other options and 
probably early summer, um, we got a commitment for um, over $25 million and climbing. And it's, it's more than I thought I, I could possibly raise. But the point is, I'm, I'm not the one raising it. It was a gift um, to me to do this work. And uh, it just, it, it's, again, that imposter syndrome creeps in and I feel undeserving of it. And I'm still trying to kind of work through that, navigate through that and just do what God told me to do in obedience. There's a need for, for solid content, for meaningful content that is important. So talk to me about like kind of what was placed on your heart before you started and then what you're creating. Sure. I think what, what I noticed in working for a giga church that represents 142 nations, it's, it's amazing the diversity that this church has, um, is that there are people from all different cultures, ethnicities, different walks, um, different lifestyles that still need Jesus. Uh, we, we can't just make this, this one-sided you know, um, view of content uh, specifically for ourselves. That's that's all nice and good to make content that we want to see that inspires us, but we also absolutely have to reach the loss. You know, Jesus said that I I have I've come to heal the sick, you know, not not the healthy. Uh, so when we make content, it needs to be relevant. It needs to be um, it needs to feel like it, it's based in a real broken world, uh, in a fallen world. People need to see themselves in the content and be able to say. That's me. I feel that way. Um, I feel uh, discouraged, or uh, I feel this that anxiety or that stress. Um, I've got you know mother and father wounds or things that I'm dealing with that that you know or I need peace. Um, if we don't connect with the world in some way or fashion, tell them about Jesus. Tell them that there's still God still loves you. God still has grace forgiveness for you, then what are we doing this for? Will the majority of the of the slate be stuff that you write and you direct or where are you finding material or, or hoping to curate it from? Sure. Um, I've got a few friends that are uh, amazing writers and we're kind of working together to create this slate of content. We've got two on the books. The first one I've written and the second one um, are uh, one of our investors had a story that they would like to tell that feels more like Sons of Anarchy. A little scared about that, but I think that's going to be <laughs> super exciting, you know, uh, because uh, bikers need Jesus too. Um, and uh, we're we're looking at already, you know, when, when you say you have this type of money and this type of access and you're making this content, um, people come out of the woodworks with a story. Literally everybody has a story. Uh, they want to tell the story about their grandmom or their neighbor's dog walker's best friend's cousin um, who found Jesus. And that's, that's all good. But we need to make sure that these stories are top notch. They need to feel like they need to have this this story arc, this, these, these, these um, deep developed characters in order to reach people. So we, we really have to be careful on, on what we take on. Where, how can we see it? Are you thinking that these will all be theatrical releases? Are you going to work with streamings? Are you launching your own? What, what's the way that we can then access your content? Sure. Um, the hope is theater. You know, you always want to get things to theater because um, you get more eyes on it. Um, you also get to, the, the film's just more, um, from a financial perspective, it just does better. Uh, because then you, you you pay for you pay for what you put in to the film, um, and additionally you pay your investors back, and you get to make more. Uh, but you know we're we're already talking to um, studios where like, well, you know we we read the concept concept of this. We want to see it before you go to theaters and make you a deal. So this is just this new world with streaming platforms that I just you know ten years ago when I was trying to do this and the doors were closing on me. Now it's a new world. Everybody wants content, especially if you have the money to make it. They're just like, hey, come, let's see it. And uh, let's see if it's a fit for us.